With internet shut for hours, Myanmar is a country which seems cut off from the world. Yet local protests continue against the military coup which abruptly ended the country's brief tryst with democracy. Satellite images released by Maxar Technology show how the defiance against the Myanmar military is literally visible from space. The most powerful image is perhaps the slogan, We Want Democracy. This slogan on your screens right now, We Want Democracy. And it was written on the main road of Mandalay City. Opponents of Myanmar's military have called for more big protests on Wednesday, the coup that cut short Myanmar's unsteady transition towards democracy has prompted daily demonstrations since the 6th of February, some drawing hundreds of thousands of people out onto the streets. In Yangon, drivers park their vehicles in the middle of a major crossway in order to block the deployment of armoured military vehicles. Responding to a broken down car campaign spearheading on social media, commuters, taxi drivers and even public transportation employees have joined this protest. <laughs> Meanwhile, Myanmar's military in its first press conference since it seized power in the country guaranteed that it would hold an election and hand over power back to a democratically elected party and also denied that it had carried out a coup. The army's justification of its February 1st seizure of power came as protests showed no signs of letting up and after the United Nations envoy warned the army of severe consequences for any harsh response to the demonstrations. The military has not given a date for a new election, but it has imposed a state of emergency for one year. Despite the army's assurances, police have filed a new charge against Suu Kyi for allegedly violating the country's COVID-19 restrictions. Now, the maximum punishment for COVID violation is three years imprisonment, but this may allow her to be held indefinitely without trial. Suu Kyi's lawyer said that she was produced in court a day ahead of schedule and without representation. He also said that he has not been allowed to see her since she was detained and that the court is yet to recognize him as her attorney. The US reacted to the additional charges and called for the immediate release of the political leader. Uh, you mentioned the additional charges um, against yeah. Aung San Suu Kyi. Um, I think it's fair to say that we are disturbed um, by reports that uh, the military has charged State Council Aung San Suu Kyi um, with additional criminal acts. Um, as we have before, we call on the Burmese military to immediately release all unjustly detained uh, civilian and political leaders, journalists, uh, and human rights activists, and other members of civil society, uh, as well as to restore the democ democratically elected government. Su Chi, who was ousted in the coup on the 1st of February, has already been charged with possessing walkie-talkies that were imported without being registered. Joining us on this broadcast now is a professor and director of the Institute of Security and uh, International Studies, Dr. Thitinan Pong Sudhirak, and he's joining us from Bangkok. Doctor, welcome to Beyond. Thank you so much for joining us now. The Myanmar military authorities imposed an internet blackout in the country multiple times. However, the world is seeing the visuals coming out of Myanmar. Hundreds of thousands of people are out on the streets protesting against the military coup. But it was bizarre to, for the first time, hear a military spokesperson come out and say that they haven't staged a coup. I mean, what exactly is their justification here? Well, I think the Myanmar military, the Tatmadaw, they are stuck in a big hole. On the one hand, they, they want to maintain some semblance of uh, legitimacy uh, because, you know, they have basically taken power, seized power by force on the day that the parliament was to convene after very clear election results that the military party, the USDP, lost in a huge landslide. 
the NLD one uh, convincingly, resoundingly. So this was a, a naked uh, robbery of the people's will, uh, a naked uh, kind of blatant takeover of power uh, at, at its own will, at its own uh, behest by the military. So now they want to kind of uh, maintain, you know, see themselves as uh, legitimate in some way. So this, they say it's not a coup, uh, and they slap more charges on Aung San Suu Kyi and others. So we're seeing more kind of uh, bogus claims and charges coming out of the Tatmadaw. I think that it looks like they're a little bit desperate on the, the legitimacy front. Uh, they, they want to have some kind of uh, the right to take over, uh, but uh, people are not seeing it that way. That's why we're seeing these bogus claims and charges. Right. Uh, we will talk about Suchi. I want to ask you about her. But uh, one more question as far as the military is concerned. Now, they have declared a one year of emergency. Uh, have they announced a specific date uh, for when they propose to hold a new election? They say the last elections were riddled by fraud. That claim has been rejected by the country's election commission. So is there any time frame when new elections might be held in Myanmar? Well, it's uh, difficult to... Uh, see any kind of time frame as, uh, as reliable because the military can make anything up uh, as it goes along. I mean, it took power, it seized power, and then they put uh, people in jail, detained people, including uh, the uh, civilian leaders. It says uh, there'll be election in a year's time, emergency for one year only. But, you know, this could change, and then they, they, it could be very slippery. Uh, the military can make things up uh, any way it wants to. And I think we will see more, more kind of uh, fabrications and more kind of... Uh, uh, wishes from the military that it wants to get its own way, whatever is necessary. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned now about the, the confrontation and the rising tension because now we're seeing the people's uh, will and, and defiance is very broad-based, it's nationwide, it, it seems very determined, and it looks like a train wreck uh, because on the other side, the, the Tatmadaw is also uh, very uh, formidable, uh, forceful, they've uh, used brute force before in the past, and this is a, a battle hardened army that's been fighting ethnic wars around the country. And I can see that they're now using the military units, infantry units from the, uh, the fighting areas, the war areas. So it looks like we're going to have a, a confrontation leading to some kind of a direct clash. Uh, this is very worrisome because we now stuck in a dilemma. If the Tatmadaw collapses, if it doesn't, it doesn't make it, uh, we will have a, a collapsing country potentially disintegrating. Uh, with the ethnic minorities uh, around the country. On the other hand, if it does prevail, ride out this storm, the Tatmadaw will be committing all kinds of uh, human rights violations and robbery of people's rights and, and democratic freedoms. So in either way, uh, we're stuck in a dilemma with Myanmar, and this has ramifications for the region, for ASEAN, for mainland Southeast Asia, and for Thailand in particular, and also for India, because you know if, there's, if the situation spirals out of control, with violence and bloodshed and the loss of uh, central authority, then uh, we will have the periphery, the borderlands, uh, running amok. Uh, this will result in people running across to uh, China and India and, uh, and Thailand and so on. So we have to, uh, you know, hope. That's right. Dr. One final question to you. Uh, you know, we saw various visuals, or the world saw visuals of. Uh, um, authorities uh, cracking down on the protesters who were out on the streets. Let's focus also on Suu Kyi. Uh, the authorities have slapped additional charges on Suu Kyi. Could you very quickly elaborate on that? Meanwhile, her lawyer says that he hasn't been allowed to meet her yet. It's, uh, you know, to be expected that they would detain her. Uh, previously, prior to the, the reforms in 2011, she was uh, under house arrest for 15 years and detained for like 21 years, so more than two decades. So now they have to detain her because, ironically, you know, she has not done a good job as a country's leader. I think many people um, have qualms about her, criticisms about her leadership. She is a micromanager. She is high-minded, uh, sometimes brash and arrogant. But nevertheless, at the end of the day, at this time when the, the, the election has been robbed, she is ironically seen back as an icon, democracy icon for her people because they have no one else to rally around and she has not brought up a new generation. So I think her, her, her days are kind of uh, finished in a way because, you know, she's 75. Um, you know, if she makes it back, uh, most likely the best thing that she can do for the country is to groom and to transition to a new leadership, a new generation, uh, bring up younger people. I mean, she had her chance. I think uh, she's kind of uh, squandered it. And, uh, you know, the, the best deal now is to try to get her out and to have her as kind of providing a transition to a, a compromise solution in Myanmar.
Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.